Hi everybody, Jonathan here. In this video, I will be giving you my take on section 4.7, which is all about optimization problems. So the optimization problems are all word problems, and that means students are going to find this section to be one of the most challenging in the whole book. Um, because it's not necessarily the math that's super hard, it's getting to the point where you can do all the calculus you've learned in order to find the maximum for some real world problem. So um, you definitely should read the book. Um, the book and I emphasize slightly different things. So I am going to give you what I think is the right way to go about these problems. And then you should compare it with what's in the book and find what works for you. Now, the most important thing when you're trying to do an optimization problem is to make sure you understand the problem. Read the question. Reread the question. Imagine a picture. Draw a picture of the problem. Um, and once you understand the question, then you can think to answer these questions, like what quantity are you trying to maximize or minimize? Or, and not only that, like what is going to affect this quantity? The quantity is involved in some complicated situation, and as things change, the quantity will change. Everything that affects the quantity you are trying to maximize or minimize um, should probably be a variable. And then start thinking about what relations, equations, can you put this quantity into? So let's try to apply that first step to an example I got out of the book. In this example, you've got 1,200 cubic centimeters of some material in which to make a box with a square base, which is to be open on the top. And we want to find the largest possible volume of such a box. So this question is thankfully rather short, so it's not too hard to read it and understand it. I think we can all visualize a box. We can all visualize that the volume of the box is going to depend on the length of its various edges, like the height and the width and the length. We'll get some relations because the box has a square base, which means the width and the length will be the same. We'll get a relation because the surface area of the box has to be at most 1,200 cubic centimeters. And I think we can all come up with some equations for volume. Now, this isn't super hard to visualize, but um, still, a picture might help. So I just drew a picture of a box. Isn't it amazing? You probably wonder why I didn't become an artist. So it's just a box. It's got a length and a width and a height. The top is open, so I wrote open on the top. And we can see some equations coming out of this. For example, the volume will be the length times the width times the height. And we can figure out the surface area and things like that. Um, however, I think this is simple enough. We don't really need to worry about the visualization that much. So once you understand the problem pretty well, then um, we need to start finding a way to introduce variables and equations so that we can uh, apply some awesome mathematics. So in step one, you should have tried to identify what affects the quantity you're trying to maximize. Um, generally, every single thing that might affect that quantity needs to have a variable assigned to it. And these problems get pretty complicated, so it's super important that you show clear work at every step of the way. So as part of that, I want you to carefully write down what each variable represents, um, or perhaps indicate it on the picture. Now, applying step two to our problem won't be super complicated. We're going to let V denote the volume of our box, and I'm going to let L, W, and H be the length, the width, and the height of the box. Now, the third step uh, that I'm outlining here is to write down any relevant relations. And when I say relation, I almost always mean an equation. That's going to involve your variables. So we basically need equations with your variables so that we can start to try and do calculus on it. For our example, it's not that hard to get the relations. We know that the volume of a box is going to be the length times the width times the height. So V equals LWH will be a relation. Um, we know that the base of the box is square, so L equals W is a relation. We know that we've got 1,200 cubic centimeters of the material. Um, so we know that that's going to make a relation for the surface area. So to get the surface area, we just have to add up the area of the sides and the bottom because the top is open on the top. So the area of the sides will be 2HW. Um, and 2HL, that'll be the four sides. 
and then the top will just be w times l. I'm sorry, the bottom will just be w times l. And therefore, we get these three relations, v equals l w h, l equals w, and 1200 equals w l plus 2 h w plus 2 h l. Now at this point, I know you're all raring at the bit, waiting to apply all this awesome calculus, like the first derivative test, second derivative test, region of the concavity, whatever, to um, be able to solve this problem. Um, however, all the stuff we've learned in chapter four only applies when you've got a function of one variable. So we have to find a way to take the quantity that you're trying to optimize and express it as a function of one variable. So almost always the relation that you have involving your quantity in these problems will have more than one variable and you'll have to use the other relations to somehow find a way to cut the number of variables down. Now in our example we have L equals W so therefore our equation V equals LWH which has three variables instead of just one we can replace the L with W and get V equals W squared H. And then our other relation, once we replace all the L's with W here, simply becomes 1200 is equal to W squared plus 4HW, because this HL equals an HW and the L equals W. Now we can take this equation and solve it for H. We first subtract W squared from both sides, and then we divide by 4W. And we therefore get that H equals 1200 minus W squared all over 4W. Now I can go back and plug into this equation here and replace that h with 1200 minus w squared over 4w and we get volume is equal to w squared times 1200 minus w squared all over 4w. And then if we simplify things a wee bit, we'll get that that equals 300w minus w cubed over 4. Now is the final step in this overall process for optimizing. At this point, you've got the quantity you're trying to optimize. You should have that quantity equal to a function of a single variable. Now we can use all the stuff in chapter two in order to optimize it. So this will almost always involve finding the critical numbers, so where the derivative is zero or does not exist. Sometimes the context of the problem will allow you to restrict the domain to some closed interval, in which case you could just do the closed interval method to find uh, any absolute maximums or minimums. Um, however, a lot of times the domain will actually be all real numbers or all positive numbers or something that's not a closed interval. Um, in that case, you might have to use the first or, derivative, first or second derivative test as well as the context of the problem. Like for example, sometimes you can tell just from the problem that there has to be a maximum. You only got one critical point, so that one critical point has to be where that maximum occurs. Now, for our problem, we had gotten V to equal 300W minus W cubed over 4. So we are first going to find the derivative. DV dW is just 300 minus 3 fourths W squared. To get the critical points, we set this equal to zero. Setting it equal to zero, you quickly get that w squared just has to be 400, so w is plus or minus 20. However, the context of the problem says that w being a distance has to be a positive number, so we can discard the minus 20. So w equals 20 is the only critical point. Furthermore, the context of the problem tells us that the volume can't possibly be negative. So if I go to this equation, v equals 300w minus w cubed over four, if I set it equal to zero, then I can find all the values of W where uh, the volume is going to be positive because it'll be just the values between the two zeros. So setting this equal to zero, we get that W is either zero or the square root of 1200. So that means that we can restrict the domain of this to be the closed interval from zero to the square root of 1200. And now the closed interval method, well, we already know that if we plug in the endpoints, we'll get zero. So all we have to do is evaluate the volume at our critical point of 20. And if you plug that in to the equation we have for volume here, you'll get that the volume um, has to be 4,000. So therefore, the largest possible volume happens when, the, um, happens when the width is 20. And I suppose we could have calculated the height while we're at it. How do we get height? We know that the height has to be, where is height? 1200 minus w squared over 4w. So if w is 20, we're gonna get 1200 minus 400, which is 800, all over 80, so 100. So the height has to be 100. 
Um, so when the height is 100 and w is 20, we get the largest possible volume of 4,000 cubic meters.